Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omanus and today I will review the third studio album by uh, one of the biggest bands today, Coldplay, uh, X and Y. Um, I used to really love these guys. You know, it's not something with Linkin Park where I think, well, yeah, I do think, you know, their uh, back catalog is better than, you know, what they're making now, I think. But, but with Coldplay, they're pretty consistent, I would say, you know, they don't really have a terrible album, I think. Although, you know, their modern stuff is really generic, I think, really generic blend stuff. But I don't really think they have a terrible album in their discography, you know. Uh, I just think they kind of went downhill, whereas Linkin Park, you know, just kind of crashed late 2000s, um, beginning of the 2010s, it just kind of crashed and never really recovered from that. I think, that's of course, uh, you know, debatable, but that's my opinion. Um, whereas Coldplay just kind of made a, well, not really a steady decline, because they made this record, which was kind of underwhelming for fans, then they made Viva La Vida, which was pretty much like, their rise to like the top, you know, although they did succeed with their first two. But Viva La Vida was pretty much like their biggest achievement yet, and then they made uh, Mano Giallato, which was kind of like pandering to the mainstream crowd, which wasn't really my thing, honestly. I do, I do like it, but it was kind of disappointing, you know. Um, and this record. Yeah, I do really like this one. I, I would say it's one of the weakest of the first four, but it's still a relatively good album. It actually got a five star rating by Blender and Q, so it's relatively solid. Um, yeah, let's get into the album. Uh, we have 30 tracks, 14 if you have heard How You See The World, which I have not uh, listened to. It's only pressed in uh, Japan, the first press of the Japan edition. The Japan edition, the Japanese edition, there, there we go. Man, Japan has, Japan has everything, <laughs> don't they? Fucking hell. I mean, it's Japan now, come on. Uh, best country ever. We start off with the opening song, you know, um, I do like the kind of thing, what they're, what they're going with here, you know, the first side is X, the second side is Y, you know, it's kind of clever, I think, although it is kind of like, Obvious in a way, obvious it was lined up, I suppose, but it's still clever, I think. We have Square One, which is a good opening track, but I would not per se go with this one. I would go with like the biggest single to put that, you know, at the opening, but you know, whatever. Square One is a solid opening. Uh, I do really love the song. It's very mellow, it's very, you know, uh, it's very chill to listen to, but I wouldn't say it is a good opening song. Although it has one in the title, you know, so yeah, I would say it's a solid opening track. Very chill to listen to, very great song to start off with. Then we have the second song, which is What If. Uh, this is a really personal favorite of mine. I really love the song. Um, you know, What If. I, I don't remember the lyrics, but I do remember that it starts off with What If, you know, as the title would imply. Uh, this is a very emotional pin track. I think that the lyrics come through better on this track, although I just forget them, you know. It does need multiple lessons to really stick in your brain, for me. Although it is a Coldplay album, but everything kind of needs a second listen, or a third or a fourth one. Very great track, it's almost five minutes long. I think it's perfect length, perfect song, you know. It's just a very great track. It actually was a single too, but I haven't really listened to this track a lot. But this track just sticks to your mind, honestly. Um, da, 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 I'll try. Uh, da, 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 da. What if the if you don't even try? You know, something in that regard. Uh, I do remember the lyrics a little bit, but it does need some, you know, replays for me. But you know, at the first couple of listens, I did really love this track, so. Doesn't really matter what the lyrics are, as good as long as the music is good. And what if is a uh, is a gem. It's a great single, so there we go. It's one of my favorites. Then we have White Shadows, which is still a really great song. Still one of my favorites. It was also a single of the album. Um, I don't really understand why it was a single, but I do really enjoy this track. It has a very like echoey kind of electronic feel to it, and it is sample craft work in one of their tracks. Uh, computer, computer love, I believe. 
So I do think that this is quite a tasty song, you know, it's quite diverse, it's quite uh, just great in general. I'm trying to look for my charger because my phone is on with that. Um, yeah, so overall this is just a very great track, you know, very diverse, very electronic inspired, which was the first time for Coldplay. Um, I'm gonna grab my charger for a bit because um, it's not lying around here, so great track. We will go into the singles a bit later on. Five seconds, please. But on this, you can just cut this out. I don't know how to edit. And you know, I'm too popular enough to buy editors or something so that's not really an option too but if you do want to edit videos for me you know send me an email or something or comment on the channel which is li most likely never going to happen but you know you never know uh yeah so there we go uh great great song great song uh, kind of a weird single honestly but it, it does work for me uh yeah so overall fantastic song one of my favorites um yeah pretty much I would say the X side, the first side is pretty much flawless. I think that uh, yeah, the upcoming song is Fix You. Uh, this is of course one of, one of my favorites too. We have that organ, that piano intro, which is just beautiful of course. And then it goes into the, into the guitar riff, into the acoustic guitar riff, and of course Chris Martin's vocals are beautiful on this track. The only flaw I have with this track, although it is still one of my favorites, but the, I, I do have a flaw with this track though. It's <laughs> like... Um, my flaw, it's not per se the music itself, it's just that if you hear this song, it's so vanilla, it's so white, you know, if you listen to this, you know this is written and sung by a white person. That not, that's not a stab at Coldplay, but it's just, this is one of the whitest tracks I've ever heard. <laughs> like this is white people music right here. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get it out of the way, you know, it was just kind of funny to say. It doesn't really hurt the song, but it is very white, you know, I don't think that any, like, hip-hop gangster, somebody will listen to this. <laughs> it's not a stab at uh, the hip-hop community, too. it's just, this is like, music doesn't get any wider than Fix You, but it's still a great track, I still love it, but damn if it isn't white. Um, I do love the ending track, uh, I do love the ending lyrics too, you know, when they're kind of try going back to the beginning bit. It's very singable, like, you can, it's almost impossible not to sing along to the song. It's just very catchy, very uh, otherworldly almost. It is kind of similar to um, With or Without You from U2, which, you know, great song too. It is kind of similar to that, otherworldly, you know, kind of starts out uh, otherworldly and is very singable, very catchy, <laughs> also kind of wide music, but you know, does hold up better, I would say, but, and it's more uh, otherworldly, I'm, I'm gonna stop saying that word because it's very difficult for me to say, but overall great track and uh, of course a Coldplay classic, a modern classic, so to speak. Yeah, and this is the track, you know, the fifth one is the the Craftwork the song. Um, I, you know, I like Craftwork, I'm not the biggest fan of techno, but I do like Craftwork and they are pretty much like the the forefathers of the of the whole thing, of the whole genre, so there we go. So you do have to give some credit where credit is due, but for me they're too weird for me, honestly, but I still like them. <sighs> some, some fucking thing between, between, my, between my keyboards, fucking hell. Uh, yeah, but Talk is overall great track, also one of my favorites. I love the, the Kraftwerk sample in there. Um, honestly, Kraftwerk never really caught my ear, but there's a great sample from them, a great guitar riff, the drums are really solid on the track, although a bit bland, but they are great. I love the echoey kind of vocals by Chris Martin, uh, so you don't know where to go, but you want to talk. Uh, you don't know if you've ever been here before, something like that. The, the lyrics are very like melancholic and nostalgic in a way. They sound kind of nostalgic, although I have no idea what the song is about. I believe, you know, about uh, a jaded robot or something, robot that has crashed into earth and, you know, 
want somebody to talk to, but can't really say it, you know, so Chris Martin and crew is basically saying, do you want to talk? It's just a very solid track, it's five minutes long, it's just perfect in my opinion. It's written by the whole band, so you can definitely hear that this track is just very, like, professionally, you know, it's greatly written in my opinion. And it also has some other writers, uh, Hutter, Bardos and uh, Schult. So we have seven writers for this track, so y you know it's great. Almost slipped there. Um, yeah, and this is actually the only track that was written by seven members. Like, Jesus Christ, seven people. And then we got X and Y, the closing track of X. Uh, this, is, this is pretty much like my personal favorite track of the album. Uh, you have some riffs on this track which are just so addictive to listen to. It, it does kind of remind me of um, Only in Dreams by Weezer, you know, you have that... It, it basically repeats like one chord the whole time, but it, it's just so addictive to listen to. It's just such an earworm, such an eargasm. Um, yeah, and they just kind of stop until, you know, the, the the melody comes back in again. So X and Y is a very great track to close with X, and it's one of my personal favorite tracks of the album. Uh, speaking of one of my personal favorite tracks, then we got Speed of Sound, which is pretty much... Yeah, it is pretty much my favorite song of the album, pretty much. Uh, this is just a very melancholic song. It's, uh, it starts out very old school, nostalgic, you know, with that piano by Chris Martin. The, the vocals are great. Uh, the whole atmosphere is just like otherworldly again, you know. That's the last time I'm gonna say that words. I, I swear, I swear. Um, yeah, so this song is just fantastic. It just, it does kind of sound again like... Uh, Fix you, you know, like uh, you two with or without you. It is kind of similar to that song, but you know, if uh, you know what's what's the fucking saying again? Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know. And that's kind of what Coldplay does here. Perfect opening track. It is pretty much my favorite song. The atmosphere is just fantastic. The song is great. It's greatly composed. Vocals are great, you know. Just everything about the song is just fantastic. Perfect opening song. Um, and then honestly, you know, uh, the, the, the record is pretty much flawless up to this point. The first seven songs are just fantastic, perfect 10 out of 10 tracks in my opinion. Um, although I have to say that these upcoming a couple of tracks are not really my um, uh, cup of tea, honestly. You know, I think that a message is great, or, well, it's pretty good in my opinion, it's not great per se. It does kind of sound like a rehash of What If White Shadows, you know, it's still good, but it just kind of sounds like a filler tune, honestly. Low is my least favorite track, although it is, yeah, it is the longest track of the album, it's five and a half minutes long, but I think that this track could have been removed, you know, could have had a more consistent album, because the record is 62 minutes long. Which I think it is the longest Coldplay album, really. I think it is, yeah. 62 minutes. Like, this is a really lengthy Coldplay album, you know. For how simplistic the band is, I don't really need an hour long Coldplay album. You know, that's also a flaw with the record, but yeah, you know, this track didn't really catch my ear, you know. It's just, it's there, it's not bad, but it didn't really catch my ear, honestly. Then we got the hardest part, which is. Uh, one of my personal favorites of the album, the last single of the album, yeah, pretty sure. Or the last track was also a single, I think. I'm not sure. No, 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 the last track is a hidden track, so that was not officially a single. Although that did happen before, I think, with the clash with... Uh, I can't remember this, the song, because I don't really care for the clash, but uh, they did have a hidden track, which was a single, Train in Vain? I think that's a song, I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm not a Clash expert, so there we go. Um, yeah, the hardest part is great, you know, you have great guitar riffs, which are really nostalgic for me, because I go way back with this song. I really love the lyrics, uh, you know, you you really broke my heart, that was the hardest part, I can see it in your heart, I can see it in your eyes, you know. This is probably the most singable, the most memorable song of the album, you know, as in, it's simplistic, but you can, you know, it's the most simplistic song, and for that it's memorable because you can sing along with almost every lyric of this track, which makes it great. Um, 
the music yeah i mean there was a music video for like a majority of the singles for the for the four singles i suppose and the clickable songs on uh on x and y all of them are half singles fix you talk speed of sound and the hardest part was the last one i think um and the music video for this is kind of cringy honestly you have like half naked old naked people dancing with the band looking pale white as fuck you know <laughs> but that's Coldplay I mean come on now so uh, the music video is kind of cringy honestly but I do really love the song but even the music video just kind of has a, uh, a place in my heart because it's still a touching music video I think they still do some very incredible stuff for how old the, the people are if you think that you know I, I personally think old people are kind of disgusting but it is still pretty impressive though what they do in the music video so if you do want to check it out then go to it you know i guess you know coldplay the hardest part it is an interesting video but it is kind of disgusting you know it's kind of uh take it or leave it uh but it is a great song though. i do love the song but yeah there you go by the end of 2006 it sold 9.9 .9 million copies that's pretty impressive so it was almost a diamond album in like a year Almost a year or two. Pretty impressive. But it is cold pleasure over there. Uh, then we have the last three songs, uh, Swallowed in the Sea, which is kind of an underrated gem of the record. I will say that this track is great. But it you know it kind of sounds like a white shadows rehash, whereas the message sounds like what if and swallowed in the sea sounds like White Shadows, still a great track, but I do think it's, you know, Y kind of rehashes what X, X already achieved, so it's still a great track, but, you know, take it or leave it. Could have done without it, but it's, I'm, I, I still, I'm fucking up. I'm still glad it made the album, because it still sounds good, but it is kind of like, you know, meh. Oh, amazing, I, you know, I get a, I get a fucking penis, uh, Um, I'm not even gonna comment on that. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, the last official song of the album is Twisted Logic, which kind of sounds like like What If and White Shadows made a baby and made Twisted Logic. It sounds kind of like raunchy, it sounds kind of interesting in my opinion, but the track is overall kind of a re of those songs. Still good, but I do think that the record could have done without, you know, make a uh, like a 47 48 minute Coldplay record that I, I still would have loved that but I do think that the record is a bit long with these last couple of tracks but it still sounds good in my opinion but definitely one of the weakest tracks of the album so far and then we have Till Kingdom Come which is a hidden track and this is actually a very catchy single and if I'm honest it, this should have been well maybe not the opening track but this should have, maybe should have been like one of the first tracks because this sounds like a catchy kind of captivating track and I, I don't really think that this should have ended the album but you know take it or leave it I suppose but it's still a very great track I think but I just don't really think it's like an appropriate closing song but it's still good though it's still catchy it's still like an interesting hidden track so I still like it but you know what should have been the the final song I think Maybe Spotted in the Sea or maybe Low, because that is the low point of the record. You know, end on the low point, you know, have that at the ending, I suppose. Um, you know, Spotted in the Sea kind of sounds like a song where you drown away, where, you know, you, you come, you get in the sea or something and you, you're swallowed in the sea in the black hole and that's kind of the end of it, I suppose. That sounds like an appropriate ending, kind of a fucked up ending, but, you know, it is kind of an ending. Whereas I think Till Kingdom Come, it just kind of sounds like, you know, you leave it, uh, you're going out on an open note, which is not a bad thing, but, you know, I would have done it different, but, you know, I'm not cold pleasure, we go, I'm not Chris Martin, so. Uh, so overall, this is a very great album. I think it is not as good as the record where it is in between of. I do think it's slightly better than the debut. I do think it has more better out outstanding songs. But I do think that the debut is more consistent where, you know, we have 10 tracks which are, I believe, 45 minutes in total or something in that regard, 40 minutes. 
which makes it a very solid album, very consistent. Whereas this album is a bit sloppier, it has a bit more filler on it, but it does have more uh, great songs and better songs in my opinion. So I'm gonna give it a slightly higher rating, I believe I gave it an album a 9.2, so I'm gonna give this album a 9.4. Really, the only tracks I don't really care for is low, low, you know, low point and twisted logic. I didn't really care for, but the rest of the tracks are really great in my opinion. You know, a message is kind of in the middle for me. Um, Swallowed in the sea was great, so yeah, you know, I, I love the X side. I mostly love the Y side, but not everything. And it is a bit too long for me, but for the rest, I love the rest. And this, this is quite an underrated record, though, I have to say. But you know, not one of my favorites of Coldplay. But it's still up there though, it's still like, it's stirred I would say, yeah, it's bronze for me. So thank you for watching this video, I don't think I have any time anymore, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, like on the the channel, on the video like one, let me know what you think about this record by Coldplay, X and Y. Do you think it's the best, do you think it's the worst, do you, do you think it's the most underrated, overrated? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.